I was baptized and my father came out of hiding. And because of all the persecution, all the, uh, the, the police trying to get to the leadership of the congregation, we had a baptismal service at five o'clock in the morning in the woods. Victor Ham, he was born in a Soviet labor camp. His parents were leaders in the underground church. It was his father who baptized him that June morning, and when he did, he prayed that God would make his son a missionary. Looking back at how God led me through all these years, I can truly say that, yes, God has answered the prayer of my father. This is GPS, God, People, Stories, and What a Story Victor Ham Has. I'm Phil Fleischman. I'm Jim Kirkland, and what a story indeed. It's a reminder that no matter where you are, no matter what you're suffering, God is with you and going ahead of you. GPS, God, People, Stories. Victor Ham is vice president for Crusades and Festivals here at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is a long way from where he was born, a Soviet labor camp in Siberia. Specifically, Vorkuta was a mining camp in the Soviet gulag system. It is uh, west of the Ural Mountains, and if you go straight up north, uh, that's about 100 miles from the Arctic Ocean. And it was pretty cold. Uh, the worst I've experienced was minus 50 L Celsius, which in Fahrenheit is minus 72. It's really nippy. Uh, we would have plenty of snow. Our one-story homes would be completely covered with snow, and there would be just a chimney, uh, you know, where you would have some smoke coming out. Uh, but the houses were completely covered with snow. There was about three feet of snow on the ground when Victor was born there in April of 1955. His parents had been sent to Vorkuta about 14 years earlier. So... What do you do to get exiled to a Siberian labor camp? Well, uh, Stalin didn't like uh, a lot of people, uh, and he actually was moving nationalities around within uh, the country, uh, ethnic groups. And because of uh, the war with Nazi Germany uh, and because of our ethnic background as being Germans, obviously he didn't trust anyone, so he sent hundreds of thousands of people into the gulags. It was in the gulag camp where Victor's parents met. His mom was a follower of Christ when she arrived, uh, not his dad. My father came to Christ, actually, in a labor camp. And a small community, a Christian community, came into being, a small group of believers, uh, because you had people from all over the country uh, sent there, and they started discovering each other. And my father uh, came to the Lord through uh, a pastor who was doing 10 years in that labor camp because he was a pastor from Ukraine, from Odessa. Victor's parents met after his father gave his life to Christ. And he says their wedding was the first Christian wedding ceremony in the Soviet gulag system. Not only did their wedding shine the light of Christ, so did their home. We had in our little home, we had a uh, church coming together, basically a group of believers. We didn't have churches. So there were no churches in that place. No Catholic churches, no Orthodox churches, no Protestant churches. People would just come together and meet. And uh, the, so that's uh, where, uh, you know, our home was basically the, the, the meeting place for that little church. By 1966, the Hams were able to leave Siberia, but not the Soviet Union. They moved to Latvia, where Victor's dad was an evangelist with the non-registered underground church. And he preached the gospel. We couldn't preach the gospel in stadiums and places, uh, but uh, he would preach it uh, wherever he could, in uh, places of uh, small uh, home churches. But he is a hero to me. There was never a time in Victor's life when he didn't believe in Jesus intellectually. But it wasn't until he was a teenager that Victor took the next step of believing with his heart. One day we had a visit in Latvia by one of those itinerant preachers. And he held a little meeting in our home. 
and he basically shared uh, the gospel and uh, preached, and that little room was packed. People were just standing. We didn't have uh, seats or whatever. There would be usually a little plank of wood, and people would be just sitting on a you know, board uh, for a couple of hours. At the end of the preacher's message, he said something like, it takes guts to be a Christian, but if you're ready, please stand up. So I got up as well, but I left the room. I didn't think it was for me. And I was blessed that my mother was standing at the entrance there. And uh, when I was leaving the room, she said, son, don't you think it's time for you? And I got back into the room, uh, you know, squeezed uh, myself through that whole uh, bunch of people there and said, I too want to be a Christian. And uh, that was the glorious moment of conversion. It was after that, Victor's dad came out of hiding to baptize him, along with several other new Christians, before dawn under the cover of darkness. When Victor's dad wasn't living underground, he worked at a state-run brick factory, and he had to meet brick production quotas. But he also still worked as a traveling evangelist. Well, when it was time for him to go preach, he couldn't just tell the factory manager he was going to miss his quota because he'd be on a missionary trip. And so quite often, I wouldn't say quite often, but on a regular basis, uh, we as kids would sort of step in and do his work so that he would be able to travel. Eventually, in the 1970s, the KGB gave Victor's dad an ultimatum. Either leave the country because of your Christian activities or go back to prison. The Hams decided to leave the country. They moved to West Germany, and Victor saw it as his chance to attend Bible college. While in Russia, we have heard rumors that there are actually Bible schools that provide uh, Christian education. And I thought, wow, that's wonderful. There is actually a school uh, that uh, studies the Bible and teaches the Bible. So that was my desire. Victor attended Bible College in Wales. He went on to marry his wife and begin a career in Christian radio in Germany. Then a radio ministry in Canada invited him to come work for them. So he moved to Winnipeg. And then in 1982, uh, I got a call from the Billy Graham Association. And they asked me to uh, do a Russian version of the Billy Graham uh, decision. So uh, we started translating Dr. Graham's messages and packaged them with Russian music. And I was the voice for Billy Graham's Radio Hour decision for 18 years. And I think in those 18 years, I preached 950 messages, something like it. So Victor was the Russian voice of Billy Graham on the radio. And in the meantime, he continued to work full time at his other radio ministry job in Canada. By the late 1980s, the Soviet Union was in its waning days and restrictions were being eased. So Victor worked with local Christian leaders to hold evangelistic outreaches all across the USSR. And I remember our first public event. It was in Tallinn, Estonia. So we rented a hockey arena. I had no idea how to do all of that stuff. No counselors, no preparations, no advertising. Uh, We had no idea anybody would come. That place was packed. And so there was ice on the ring there. They put something, a box in the middle of the ice there. And uh, so there was some music singing. And then uh, one of the leading pastors says, Victor, go on the box and preach. So I remember that day I got on the box and started preaching and extended an invitation. And people started coming by the hundreds, kneeling right there on ice. And uh, it was just a glorious, glorious opportunity. We can't know all the stories of changed lives that came from that moment, but God did let Victor know part of one story. A couple of years ago, I was in Lithuania. A pastor comes to me and says, do you remember that day? I says, oh, how can I forget? He says, I was one of those who was standing on my knees on that ice. That was in 1988. In 1991, the year the Soviet Union dissolved, Billy Graham called Victor. He asked him to join the team and help prepare for his upcoming outreach in Moscow. The call came 15 years after Victor prayed for such an opportunity. When I was in England at a Bible college, somebody, some of my friends, got a tape with Billy Graham preaching on Standing in the Gap. And we listened to that tape, I don't know how many times. 
you know, we practiced. We said the same things Billy did. We used our hands. And one night, I remember, I knelt down before I went to bed. I said, Lord, I would like to work with Billy Graham. I was 1976. Today, Victor works for Billy Graham's son, Franklin, organizing his evangelistic outreaches here in the United States and all around the world. Just a few months ago, Victor and Franklin were in Moscow together. I took him to the airport and was coming back with uh, the police escort and all of that. Sirens flashing and we're just racing through the city of Moscow. And I'm sitting in that entire motorcade alone. And I'm thinking to myself, here's a, a guy from Siberia who was chased by the police. Now he's escorted. Lord, I'm amazed by you. And all of that has nothing to do with me. It's only because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to be found faithful in proclaiming this grace to all the people and making sure that they come to the full knowledge. How you love me. God's plan for Victor Ham's life took him from a remote Siberian labor camp to helping Billy and Franklin Graham tell people around the world about Jesus. Have you discovered what God's plan is for your life? We can't help you with the specifics, but we can tell you this. He wants you to surrender your heart to Jesus. And we can tell you more about how to do that at BillyGrahamRadio.org. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a tab called Grow Your Faith. That's BillyGrahamRadio.org. In just a minute, Victor's got a funny story about learning English. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Today, I would like to pay special tribute to the leaders of the United States and the Soviet Union. Billy Graham. During your long and complex history, you have learned that the church cannot be isolated from events in the world and in the nation. You have learned during the many changes of the last thousand years that God is unchanging in His faithfulness and His truth never changes. And through the Bible's message, we learn of our need for salvation and God's love for us as individuals. It tells us how you and I can turn in repentance and faith to Jesus Christ who died on the cross and shed his blood for our sins and rose again from the dead. I'm deeply grateful for the emphasis of the Russian Orthodox Church places on the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now back to the hosts of GPS, Phil Fleischman and Jim Kirkland. We've shared a lot of Victor Ham's story, but there's actually a lot more that we just didn't have time to include. A few of the little things, like uh, when he was growing up in Siberia, he and his friends would use steel bathtubs to sled ride off the roofs of houses, or that he's gone from being imprisoned for his faith to meeting with heads of state around the world. And then this story about learning English at a language school in Bristol, England, when he was in his early 20s. Before actually the language school course started, I spent a couple of days with a Japanese fellow who learned English himself. So he pulled up uh, King James uh, Bible, opened uh, John 1, and we started reading. And he would explain to me. So a week later, I started my English language course. And Mr. Davis who was the principal of the language school, he listened to me and said, you speak Shakespearean English. I thought to myself, isn't that wonderful? (laughs) And he said, you are using thee and thou instead of I and you and all of that. I had no (laughs) idea what the difference was. But he learned, and eventually Victor would go on to serve as both Billy and Franklin Graham's interpreters at some of their crusades and festivals in Europe. Franklin's not holding any festivals this year because he's holding prayer rallies all across the United States, every state capital, as a matter of fact. It's called the Decision America Tour. He's challenging Christians to boldly live out their faith at home, in public, and at the ballot box. And at each of the stops, he's sharing the gospel as well. All the details about the tour are online at decisionamericatour.com, decisionamericatour.com. Well, Jim, I want to say a big spasiba to Victor Ham. Mm. Spasiba. That's Russian for thank you. Victor taught me that. 
And a big, uh, I gotta get it right again, a big spasiba to you for joining us for this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland, and it was awfully good of you to not saddle me with saying thank you <laughs> in Russian. I'll stick with American English. Thank you for listening. GPS is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Oh,